While everyone's been so patient waiting for new videos, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek of some of the exterior trim as you were about to watch a video of the inside paneling. Almost completed all my insulation. There are just the places where the jack bolts are going to go. I've got those pieces cut. So they'll have to be carved out around the bolts. So uh, this piece is not glued in because I need a cutout for my uh, built-in ice box. That will be a complete separate video. So I've got pretty much every area except for this curve up here which these pieces here stick out about a quarter inch past this piece here and then this is five eighths and anyway I might just put reflectix up there a small air gap unless I gotta fur it out to three quarters it's a bit of a level change there's gonna be a shelf across with some little cabinets up here anyway so I think just reflectix will be fine in that small area I mean pretty much everywhere there's wood is uh not insulated anyway so and with the wood stove in here I think it might even be good if a little bit of warm air can escape <laughs> I guess we'll see so I'm gonna cut some interior paneling or get started on it anyway I'm gonna do these low sections here first oh sorry about that light right in the camera uh, first pieces to go on is that so we're gonna go to the table saw and cut that right now so these pieces are pretty wavy Let's see it they're pretty wavy So I'm just going to do a long rip. Normally I'd straight edge this on the panel saw. But for my purposes, the factory edge is probably straight enough. And so I'm just going to rip my pieces and then I'll just cross cut them on the panel saw. Probably don't need that much blade projection. cut plastic laminate because it's so thin and flexible if you hold it up and it's actually curved like this it helps kind of keep it straight and hold it down if it's wavy and up if it's not pushed down tight you actually get like a scalloped or a curved uh, edge anyway there's one well, let's cut this other one here Helping very much. <laughs> you have all the time. So I just put um, a box of kindling firewood, because it was heavy, <laughs> uh, pushing the panel up and I traced it out. I'm actually gonna transfer my marks and cut my hole a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna actually put some pine molding in there because otherwise you're gonna see the edge. There's my... Uh, so if I do this flush with this frame, actually that's gotta be sanded. Uh, through the flush with the frame, you're going to see the edge of the plywood here, which looks kind of crappy. So I'm going to cut it maybe a half inch bigger, and then I'll just put a little pine frame in there. 
and then there'll be another pine frame over the uh, plywood. It'll all make sense. So yeah, I got these marked out and I am going to uh, bring them outside. So I'm just gonna transfer all our marks here. And then this one, I'm just going to take a little half inch stick. So I don't want to be super sloppy here. Oops, like, oh, <laughs> that just was. I don't want to be super sloppy, but this is going to be, the actual edge where my cut is going to be will be completely covered, but same time. Okay, so make sure. Scribble out our ridge line. Make sure we're going through the right line. Most of my interior paneling will be getting painted, and then I have some fur for trimming it out. But I think this paneling, it's just Luan, Philippine mahogany as it were, but I think it'll end up being quite dark, even though some of the paints do look kind of cool. Uh, I'm mostly going to paint most interior white or a very light color for some brightness. So I'm showing a plunge cutting technique here. There are a few ways to do a cutout. You could use a circular saw or a track saw or a jigsaw. You could also use the table saw and uh, clamp your piece down and as you raise the blade, I'm actually dropping it onto the blade. I would not recommend you do this unless you really know what you're doing. Power tools can be very dangerous and it's up to you to make sure you read, understand and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools in your shop and take safety seriously because it's your responsibility. I may not actually show this in my video, but if I do, uh, I'm going to keep the same end against the fence because this other side is way too long, obviously. Uh, so my first cut is from the fence to this side of the blade. It'll also be the regular reading on your fence uh, gauge there. So we're going to go 18 and 7 sixteenths. There, I like to double check. Okay, and then my second one is going to be 29 and a half, but including the blade because I want to leave everything on the other side of the blade. So it'll be 29 and a half to this side of the blade. You'll see. First one is set.
Okay, now the blade will undercut the bottom side of the sheet. So this plywood's very thin, so it'll be minimized, but on a three quarter inch sheet, you're gonna have, it's gonna go quite a bit past. Since there's only a little bit over an inch here, you can really get in some problem areas and really weaken your structure. This one should be okay. Here. Oops, I went the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so 29 and a half to this side of the blade. That looks pretty good. Okay, so also one thing to remember is if we cut all the way through here, this piece is going to be loose potentially binding the blade. So you can leave a couple little nubs and just hit it with a knife or a little handsaw. Yeah, I cheated. I turned the saw off when I had like a quarter inch left and then slowly went through. Okay, so I find that operation reasonably safe, but not without its risks, so I do not recommend it. I may not show this. But that is our little cutout. Not technical. We're going to get this thing on there before I break it off. Okay. So I have a PL300, which is good for styrofoam. So I've got to make sure I don't get these confused because regular polyurethane adhesive or solvents, it'll melt the styrofoam, which we don't want. So. going to get on the styrofoam. Don't want to go too thick because it will actually, if you have it too thick, it'll really bridge your paneling and your Yeah, I've just started the interior paneling here. I've completed this part. I'm doing this part now, so I'm gonna make it in one piece. So I just fit it up above and marked where to notch it. So I'm gonna notch it here. I also have to notch it here. So that is what we are doing right here. So I'd filmed a long and detailed segment showing exactly how I made these notches. Unfortunately, I seem to have transposed my measurements and <laughs> I took out a part that I shouldn't have taken out. As you can see by the green there, uh, those notches should have been way smaller and just left the bolt hole access. So I ended up 
cutting them even a little bit larger so they'll land on the framing and then I have patches to go in there and it will be covered. One side is underneath the sink. The other side is where bench seating is gonna be. So I'm not super concerned about this small mistake and I didn't wanna recut another whole sheet just to make it all in one piece because it's not going to show. So I was able to just move along and sometimes mistakes do happen. You just fix them as best you can. Worst case scenario, you replace the piece. In this case, I just made some patches, as you will see. So, our paneling is in, including our little patches. Like I said, under the sink counter, and there's going to be a back here with cushions. I'll probably have like another, it's all gonna be covered. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here, guys. It's probably long enough. I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter, but basically it's cut your pieces to fit. Mark your stud locations, put your PL on your styrofoam, and put your PL on the actual studs, set it in place, and staple it home. So I have a little bit more interior paneling for uh, my next video, uh, some of it in the upper bunk area, and then I do have footage I am editing for the exterior trim, which I'm hoping to get done pretty soon as well. So thanks a lot for watching, guys.